The earliest engagements with art that I can remember are being taken by my mom to the British Museum. I do remember really, really liking the Egyptian galleries and spending a lot of time there. When I was a kid in Lagos, I'd hear this amazing sound of people reciting these incredible melodies, this call and response, and I was just drawn to it. This was one instance where I realized, wow, art can really make things visible that you can't experience visually in the everyday life. Recently, in Edinburgh, Scotland, over 50 leading thinkers gathered to address a single question. Do the arts primarily have to do with understanding and not simply, or not even, delight, amusement, pleasure, or emotional catharsis? And if so, is there an empirical connection between art and understanding? So we wanted to put that philosophical claim that the arts are primarily about knowledge or understanding to the test. Can we, by getting people um, from the sciences, from theology, religious studies, philosophy, the arts, arts research involved, craft experiments that can test that kind of an idea? Uh, and those kinds of projects move along a spectrum from conceptual to empirical to experimental. But all of the projects are empirically or experimentally aimed, uh, seeking to test that idea that the arts have primarily to do with knowledge uh, and understanding. I am a cognitive neuroscientist. I study music perception and cognition and what we call computational music theory. I write poetry and narrative, and I am a philosopher. Personality psychology. Cognitive psychology. Architecture. Biblical scholar. Art historian. Psychological scientist. A neurologist and a cognitive neuroscientist. As scientists, we're skeptical. That's our main thing, right? So we're also skeptical about what art can actually do. What power does art actually have to change understanding, to provide new insights, or maybe even change attitudes and behaviors and so on? It's a particularly modern Western problem to have the arts and the sciences separated. Arts inspire wonder, and wonder is the beginning of inquiry, it's the beginning of philosophy, it's the beginning of, of science. The arts also cultivate our intuition. Colloquially, we equate science with knowledge and with the process of knowing, understanding, and we equate art with feeling or experiencing. Yet, we know from decades of research at the intersection of cognition and emotion that emotion and cognition are inextricably linked. But if you're talking about, uh, you know, the hard sciences like physics and engineering and biology, no way uh, the arts can substitute for those. So it, it, the statement needs to be unpacked. When we have these jaw-dropping experiences in art, hearing a piece of music that just gives us chills and makes us forget where we are, that, for me, is a road to deeper understanding. Why is it that I'm encountering something I would describe as spiritual or transcendent far more often in a movie theater than in church settings. The question in a way is, could art facilitate a widening of one's horizon? We are forming a laboratory of artists working together to explore the way in which artistic creation can make meaning of religious experience. We are using eye-tracking devices to understand where people look when they are looking at a piece of visual art, be it a painting, a movie, a sculpture. We're primarily looking at music, paintings, photography, film and media studies, manuscripts as artworks, literature and painting, stained glass, Sufi poetry, architecture, the way in which the visual arts are connected to language. They talk here in Templeton terms, in terms of a community of practice, and they've been very intentional, worked us extremely hard in curating conversations between um, different people in different fields. The project that we're working on involves musicologists and ethnomusicologists and archeologists and art and architecture historians, and so it's inherently interdisciplinary. I need cognitive scientists and curators and philosophers to partner with me, to work with me, to answer some of these larger questions. One of the exciting things about working with scientists on this project is finding empirical ways to demonstrate some of those areas of deeper understanding. I think that could turn out to be 
one of the most valuable aspects of this entire initiative. For sure, the arts can provide spiritual information. There is no question about it. Science can tell us why we might have evolved the capacity to grasp the beautiful, but it isn't going to tell us what is beautiful. It can tell us how it is that we can cognize right and wrong, but it can't tell us what is right and wrong. The sciences can do a lot, but they can't do it all. And so uh, the arts and humanities are absolutely essential for helping us figure out what's good, what's true, what's beautiful, what should we hope for. I think it's Ian Rankin who said that the difference between life and fiction is that life doesn't have to make sense. The reason to make art is not to imitate or copy life, but to create some form of meaning. A great piece of music will have this moment of wondrous surprise that's repeatable. It's sort of like getting a joke and being able to tell it again and laugh again. I'm sympathetic to the idea that the arts must be taken no less seriously. Having said that, I am a scientist. Strong intuitions or well-reasoned positions are the starting point, not the ending point. What's really exciting about this work is that there is so much uncharted territory. So it's a wide open canvas. Mm -hmm.